26, 2023 at 6.15. And welcome all to the select board meeting of Rochester, Vermont. Um, we have conformed to the open meeting law by posting our agenda in three places. We have posted it on our website and we have emailed all the interested parties, the long list of them. So we will proceed with the meeting. Uh, first thing that we would like to do is review and accept prior meeting minutes. We have two meetings that we were at, June 12, 2023. I have read the minutes and I move that we accept these. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. They are lodged. And we had another little meeting on June 22nd. I have read those, and I move that we accept those minutes. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Normal regular business. Um, we also would get some normal uh, business out of the way with approving the May Treasurer's Report. I did read that over, and... The real proof of the pudding comes in the next month because this is May, so June being the last month of the, the fiscal year. Um, I did read it over. I accepted it. Um, Julie is paying very close attention to what she needs to look into a little bit more and accepting the figures, so I move that we accept it. I second that. All I also favor. read it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And you can sign that one. Yep. Okay, so we are now at number three on our list is removal of a planning commission member. Um, on the, this, this was a letter submitted to us by the Rochester Planning Commission. Um, on behalf of the Rochester Planning Commission, I'm writing to request the select board remove Louis Kochi. Did I say that right? Go ahead and play on the planning board. We have not seen or heard from Lewis in months. He has failed to respond to numerous emails and calls from our chair and from me. Looking at his attendance record for the past year, we see that the last meeting he even tried to attend by, by Zoom was in August of last year. Um, we urge you to use pow your power under statute 24 BSA section 4323A. Um, we really need a full, active, seven-person board to do our work. That is especially true right now when we are revising and updating our zoning bylaw, which was last revised in 2009. Roll up your sleeves. Um, so um, the select board can agree with the sentiment of the planning board. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, yes, there is. Oh. There is. Um, Robert, this is Kristen. It looks like you're on both your computer and your phone. Could you oh, that's an insurance just policy. mute one of the two of them so you're not echoing? Okay. okay. I'm going to hang the phone up and then I'll talk to the computer. Okay. It... Thank you. Go ahead, Robert. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Kristen, as always. Uh, Patty, I received... Well, there are two things. One, are you the chair of the select board? No, I am not. Well, why did you not uh, introduce the fact that Dune isn't available to be present tonight before you started the meeting? He's the chair and he's nowhere. So why would you, why am I watching you on, on Zoom replacing Dune and approving uh, minutes from a former meeting and the chair is not present. Because we have a quorum and we are allowed to proceed with the meeting because we do have two out of the three members here. Well, I think it would have been proper for you to say, Dune is unavailable. He and his partner are whatever. And and I am, I am sitting here in a quorum to approve the minutes from the former meetings and to move forward with the pro with the present meeting. Okay, so you just so noted that for me. 
So thank you very much. It is on the record. Well, I also want to say, Dune sent me an email uh, about uh, uh, an hour ago saying that Mr. Louis Gucci, Gucci, whatever his name is. First of all, I don't know who he is. Secondly, I don't know the word, what, what does the word ghosting mean according to the select board of Rochester? What is ghosting? Not exactly sure where you're picking up that word. Um, I read the letter from the planning board. Ghosting is not in that letter. So. Well, well, well I want to put forward the definition of ghosting to the town of Rochester via Dune. He said, Louis Gotchi, whatever his name is, is ghosting, is ghosting. What does that mean? I would assume that he is not visible and, and we can move on from, from that. So noted, not ghosting means not visible. Well, no, it's gotta be a legal, a legal statement in the town records that Dune, the chair of the select board, said that Mr. Gucci, Gucci, whatever his name is, is ghosting. Okay. That's, that's got to get into the minutes, and I hope Martha Slater is listening. It, it, it is in the minutes as of right now. Okay. That's good. Okay. So are those your comments on this? Well, Thank you for giving me extra minutes and I hope the time clock's not running out, but uh, there are other comments that I don't think, my voice doesn't work so well these days. So <laughs> I'm sure you're ha happy about that, but um, it's got, Tim, Tim uh, Calabro is on this meeting and these, whether it's Martha Slater or Tim, the minutes that are put into the record by Julie, have to be recognized by what I put forth. Ghosting. Who has the authority to say someone's ghosting? I'm not really? quite sure, but we would we would prefer to move on. We have a lot of people in the room, and so how many people? How many people are in the room? Yeah. Two, four, Three. Fifteen. Eight. 15. 15 well, let them, let, let them speak forward. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any comments about removal of a planning commission member? Who's the member? Louis Kachi. Oh, never heard of him. <laughs> Seems to be a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay, no other comments? I think I, that this this uh, situation with Mr. Louis Gotchi should be in, in an executive session and not put forth to the public. Um, he is not an employee of the town, so therefore um, it's, it's not necessarily a personnel issue. Um, this is the planning commission coming to us. So it's one commission asking the select board. Well, well, who's well, Patty? Who's present with regards to the uh, uh, planning and zoning board in, in the fifteen people you just mentioned? What, Dan who's McKinley. representing? Dan McKinley and Sandy Haas. Well, Sandy Haas should comment, and so should Dan McKinley. Um, I think they had it covered in their letter. Do you have anything that you'd like to add to that? It's it's in the letter. It's in the letter that I just read. Okay, so um, I move that the select board and the planning commission um, remove the name of Louis Kachi um, from the planning board so that we can appoint a new person to be in that spot so that the planning board can proceed with the work at hand. I second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you. And thank you, Louis, for your service. Okay, um, to move on to use the time of the same people that are sitting here with us, um, we have a planning committee requisition discussion. 
That's what we wanted to move on to, correct? Yeah. What say you? I don't have yeah. anything on that. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me all right in Zoom land? Or I need to move forward? I'll go no ahead complaints. and if uh, folks can hear me, uh, this is Dan McKinley, Chair of the Planning Commission. We've been working on the revision of our um, town uh, zoning for several months. Um, it was last um, revised in 2009, uh, so there was a lot to be done with it. Um, a lot of new statutes that we had to uh, have reviewed, and the Regional Planning Commission is assisting us with doing that. And they've done an outstanding job of digging deep into um, our existing zoning and finding things that needed to be rectified, to be, uh, be following the statute, and just to improve the flow of the uh, of the document, and also to address new issues that we've had since 2009. Um, housing is a big one. Energy is a big one. Um, so uh, they're really uh, helping us move this thing forward. And I think we have been going since uh, last summer. Last, last summer. Yeah. So we're moving on a, a year with this process. Um, and it's it's um, it's going well. A little bit of challenge, you know, with, um, with doing things remotely for, for some of the some of the period, but um, it's moving along. And we had a, a thirty-five hundred dollar contract with the Regional Planning Commission to begin with to move this uh, this uh, process. And we recently met with um, uh, Sarah Wright, who's our um, person from the Regional Planning Commission, and Kevin Geiger, uh, the Regional Planner, to talk about our progress and what still needs to be done. Um, and the money that we had in there, 3500 in the contract, is not going to see us through to getting the documents um, revised. Uh, we're almost at the point where it's ready for a final edit, um, review by the Planning Commission, and then a Planning Commission hearing. So we hope that uh, by October we'd be able to do that. And we're requesting an additional $3,500 um, to move us to that, that goalpost. Uh, once we have it uh, reviewed by the Planning Commission, the uh, Planning Commission would have a hearing, and then it would be revised by the community comment, and then it would go to the select board for review, a hearing, and hopefully uh, adopting it. So we're looking for uh, uh, the cost to be seven thousand dollars altogether, Total, yeah. not to exceed. Um, I don't think that we really had anything in the budget for this going forward. No, we didn't. Um, so we may have to look around to see where we could pull that kind of funds from. Um, uh, I'll also note that we originally applied for a grant. Um, <clears throat> Or seven thousand dollars <laughs> to do this work, and um, we didn't get that grant, so we tried to cut it short. And uh, we're realizing that it's not something we we, could, we should cut short. Um, so um, this money does it go to Two Rivers? Yes, okay. all of it. The contract. Yeah. yeah. Um. I think would it be possible to move this to a next meeting when we have a full board? Yeah, yeah I, so. I mean, we're moving into that next fiscal year. Right. So we'll take a look at our next fiscal year budget and see where we can pull that funding. I'm not saying that it's not something okay. we can do. Right. It is something we can do. We just have to roll up our sleeves right. and uh, see where we can figure, pull that from. Yeah, figure out where it's coming from. So yeah. let so, us do our work. Okay. And I guess we will be getting back to you. and. Yeah. We, we need to make this work. Yeah. So, may I comment? Comment. <clears throat> yes, go ahead, Robert. I'm very concerned about the dependency on grants and uh, nonprofit organizations seeking money from Two Rivers out of Quichi. Someone has to figure this out. There's something not right with the dependence of Rochester for grants and monies that the taxpayers pay all the time and the town has no money, just like Bethel. And then they they lean on two rivers out of Quichi to finance uh, new hotels, uh, new buildings, 
roads, whatever. So well, someone has to do that. Robert, I'm not concerned about what Bethel is doing. Um, we have been in between grant writers. Um, we had one leave and we have one that's just coming up to speed. So therefore we do, in the interim, we did need to rely on Two Rivers to uh, bridge that gap. And um, they are a very vital resource and a, a, a valuable resource. So we will still continue to rely on them for certain grants. But why does the town of Rochester rely on Two River out of Quichi to, to finance the things that uh, uh, Dan McKinley wants to do or the, the uh, school wants to do? There's too, too much money coming from out of Quichi. Where is that money? How, how do they get the money and you don't have it? The people that work the people that work for Two Rivers are, are highly qualified people. Um, I'm not saying that the planning board is not, but it is it is it's a it's a wonderful double checking to have someone that is uh, highly qualified to write grants to um, walk you through what you need to do. That's okay. not, Patty, that's not the question. Joni retired. She she you know left six or eight months ago. There's a reason why she did. So I, I don't understand why, whether it's Bethel or Rochester, why you guys have to lean on, you know, that very important financial institution to finance road, uh, road improvements, infrastructure, library improvements, and so on. What is the answer to the question I'm asking? Why do we rely on expert people Catherine has something to say about that. That's not what he asked. Hi, Robert. Um, you know that Two Rivers is our regional planning commission. We have a volunteer government here. We are not city planners. We are not urban planners. They have not only access to funds that pass through them, they have an awareness of all the funding available for various projects. And that's why we have a planning commission. We rely on their expert and their guidance. It's a very, very essential part to Vermont government. But shouldn't that come from the, the tax base of a town and not lean on to the separate operation? And who, who just spoke? Hey, taxes for Rochester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. who, who was just speaking? It's Catherine. Catherine. I'm asking you that. I can't hear what you're asking. This is an issue that you have with Rochester as a taxpayer of Rochester that I would suggest you put it in writing. Well, Catherine, Catherine, it's not like Bethel is not in the same place because we use a lot of money from Two Rivers out of Quichi. But you're it taking me, up time in this meeting me for questions that we can't really respond to. And there's a lot of people here with business to do tonight, Robert. Please. The point I'm trying to make is that either Rochester and Bethel raised their property taxes. Oh, oh, oh here, here's Dune. I think he's in Canada or something. I think your point has been made, Robert, and I, I think we're all set to go forward from here. Wherever we were. Jim, did you want to chip in? We're talking, as you probably know, about the planning and zoning request for additional funds. And you are on mute, just so you know. I got some to say. Um, okay. Basically, looking at the budget here that we have that's ending this end of this month, it looks like the expenses we have here are 6500 that we fiscally budgeted in July of 22 to June of 23. Of, of this year and so you've used only 1500 of that so I, I don't know if that's accurate or not we need to get the accurate figure behind that if mm -hmm. if your 3500 is calculated into that from the past or not or if that was a grant funds we can answer some of that you might have funds enough in there already if we use them before the end of the fiscal year but at the close of the fiscal year, those funds turn back into the general fund. So 
we, we'll have to get they'll the girls will have to take look at that and figure that out and I, i'm trying to find it through here but it take me a minute and it's but we okay. can we can definitely have some kind of answer for you down the road so yeah. Um, yeah. There, there may be money enough there already. We don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why you only did contract for thirty five hundred? If you had more. Yeah. 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 Work on it. I'll, I'll come visit with you. Okay. That yeah. sounds good. Thanks, Thanks, yeah. Man. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll have um, two rivers uh, bill for the what they. Uh, yes. Let's bring it all up to date. Yeah. Bring it up to date, and then we can mm -hmm. figure it out before the end of the month. Yeah, that would be nice if, I don't know if it's possible, um, but if we could get something from them soon, tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. May I ask so a question to everyone present in this meeting tonight? I feel like we need to have a um, yeah, We'd like to hear from Dean first. He's been waiting. I don't, I don't have anything to say in particular. I'm just I'm glad I made it here in time to get in on the meeting. I've been driving through the rain pretty heavy for a while, so. Just... We can hear you well, so stay tuned. All right. Okay. So should I ahead. ask my question, Patty? Yes, go right ahead. Okay. If anyone in the room, including Catherine Shankman, Dune, I want you somebody to answer this question. What is the percentage of property taxes that goes directly to the supervisory unions? What's the percentage? If your taxes are a hundred dollars. How much of that money goes directly to the supervisory union? Can anyone answer that question? Um, we're, we're on an agenda. You have asked this question before. I'm not sure if you got an answer, but you can ask that question separate and away from this meeting if you'd like. I think that's totally improper when Dan McKinley's asking for $7,000. The, the answer is 85% of property taxes go directly to the supervisory union. That's okay, why. So we don't have to work on answering your question. Well, that's very typical. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to now move over into the recreation department and Dean Mandel. Yeah, um, I sent a an email to the board on the 16th of this month, and I'm assuming you all read it, but I'm, um, I'm pretty much going to read it verbatim, um, and um, so the Recreation Farm is utilizing the umbrella of the Town of Rochester in the grant process. Um, there's three of us that meet weekly working on several grants to reduce state space. Um, Norm's worked very hard on that, and um, we are and Janet as well. It's, it's a great team, and we get a lot done in an hour. Um, but the, um, the, the main question is, um, that, uh, well, so this allows us to skirt the nonprofit criteria that most of the grants we are seeking requires. Um, it's a long process. At our last meeting, we have decided to continue with each of the many grants, but also start the bidding process of this project. As a contractor, I know that this process also takes a considerable time. We think it's imperative to move forward on many fronts to be able to possibly get the grants in place and a contractor chosen to possibly do the work before this coming week. We also have been moving forward with the land transfer of Martha Slater's property. You know, so you're aware of the, the uptick on that. Mm -hmm. um, we got an email today from the lawyer. He's meeting with, is it this week, Norm? Um, yeah, actually it depends on, Julie, are you having a busy week? This week, it's, it's <laughs> every week is busy for Julie. <laughs> then tax bills go out next week, right? For, for like a deed search and that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, we could probably work next, next week would be better. Probably. Okay, yeah. good. I'll, I'll set them up for that. <clears throat> um, and, and they basically, he's drafting the deed, and um, Martha has agreed to the actual plot points on the property. So, 
so we're definitely moving ahead with that, and um, um, it'll get that done soon. Um, but we're, what we're primarily looking for is um, stepping forward with the uh, um, the bidding process. Yeah, because we, we have uh, we have to kind of move in in the direction of almost doing everything at once, mm -hmm. or else you know so. Mm -hmm. We have 11 grants out right now. Um, mm -hmm. We're working on, but there's various phases of the 11. Um, but in particular, there's the uh, State of Vermont Recreational Grant mm -hmm. that requires um, actual bids. That, you know, they, they want three bids from each phase of the job. And we got to get that grant in by September. Um, so we're looking at like, two solid months of collecting bids if we get the bid out soon. Um, have you drawn up a scope of work? So I have. Okay. Did you read the email? I read the email. I didn't okay. read the scope of the work scope right of away. Work, I, if you want me to, you know, to go through it, but basically I have a <coughs> list here. Um, so basically I'm requesting help formatting this particular list that I sent you okay. into the bidding process that Rochester has. And I don't know who does that, um, whether Cricket is doing it, but I can read it verbatim of what I, what I wrote in the, in, the, in the email. I don't think you have to do that, Dean. I think we just have to sit down and go through the forms. Okay. I, I think we do have the forms in the back that we we've used in the past and, and we can sit down and draft something out. So who, who the, would I sit down with? Then? Well, it'll be Kristen and myself and, and probably Julie will be involved. Okay. And you guys will. So should I set up a meeting? Yeah, we can do that sometime. I, probably after the fourth, if that's all right. Yeah. I mean, things are yeah. kind of crazy right now. Is that yeah. okay with you, Kristen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I'd rather make sure you're, you're good with yeah, whatever. Yeah, just getting through the fiscal year we're trying to live right now. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be better if we do this in July, so these gals can close the books and yeah. and we can move forward that I way. Understand. Yep. I Thank you. I think the um, what I'm trying to make clear is that we can't just you know get the grants right and then have the money and then get the bids out and then it, it all almost has to happen together. Well. And, but you never get the grant money until after the job's complete, so mm -hmm. that that's just the way it works. I, yeah, and so we, we are. So that's you know, the. We're working hard. We're we're relying also on the on some of the ARPA funds right. that you promised us. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's. Um, I think it's coming together. It's just the I think the um, the land thing I think is going to happen within a, a month. I think the the bidding process is really the missing part of the puzzle and um, I did write, I, I cc Cricket on this. Um, I don't, you know, I don't, I've never really written a bid from the point of view of the town. So that's kind of what I'd like to like help with. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that. Yeah, okay. we, ha we have a template where it'll all fall yep. into okay. place. Yep. Can I make a comment? Um, yes, you can, Robert. Was that Dean Mendel speaking? Yes, yes it, was. it was. Hi, Robert. I have total respect for Dean, and he's always sharing goodness with the Valley. That's been his life. But I want, I want everyone to just, you know, just sit back and think about this. If your property taxes were 45% for the supervisory unions, Dean would not have to go through 11 grants to get money that he's trying to support the children with. We'd have 45%, whether it's in Bethel or Rochester, put towards the goodness of the valleys. And it's a disgrace. 85% of your property taxes go directly to the supervisory unions. And guess what? We have no school. And the town of Rochester doesn't know what to do with the existing school. So all that money could be awarded to do or to a dean for his goodness to support the community. 
and it's something everyone should think about. Okay, thank you. I mean, we do have an elementary school and we do support our high school students to go to other schools. Okay, um, so we're good there, yep. correct? Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. And so now I think I'd like to move on to Jan with shelter team and personnel issue. Oh, it's a personal. Huh. Oh, oh, it says personnel. I Not wanted anymore, to uh, talk about the need for us to have a budget and how we go about getting a budget back and, and who we talk to and what the process is to have a budget. We have 10 really good, solid volunteers. We've done really good things, and uh, we need to all have our CPR recertified in September. It's up to 100 bucks a person. Mm -hmm. So um, going to need money for that again. And, um, you know, supplies, the volunteers have been putting money out of their pockets for a long time. So mm -hmm. I think the town needs to help with running the shelter, helping support the shelter if we're going to have them. So when you say you need a budget, you're asking the town to contribute money towards you or you need to structure your organization with a budget? You need to no, have a budget. we need to have money from the town okay. to support the shelter team functions. And we always have had money. And when Vic was emergency planner, there was a pot of money that we could use to print stuff and send postcards and you know, all that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just looking to figure out how to get that back, how to, think, how to get Sub back on that. Submit a budget to the Budget Finance Committee when we meet in the fall, and then we can, we'll have you in to support whatever your budget is. Okay. And, and justify that. You just have to put it together and bring it in when we meet. You and we'll call you in. Uh, okay. You just get Julie to know uh, or hand in your budget when, we're, when we request them to come in. Okay. And then we will Does notify you. Does that be a certain form? Or no, just no. So you can. You, or? Yeah, you, okay. you sit right. down and, and write we'll your budget. And we'll sit down with you, you in person and discuss okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Is there sometime in the fall? Or <coughs> October, there... mid -oc mid to late when October. I, um, I reach out to each department and let them know, you know, that we're going to be working on the budget okay. or whatever and give them a deadline. So okay. when I do that, I'll add you to my list Good. of people that I email. Yeah. And then um, and it's you can okay just. okay with me if it goes in VP. I mean, Larry and I are working together all the time anyway. Yeah. Um, so. Well, we'll have to see how it. It depends yeah. on how the accountant looks at it and all that. Okay. So, so, so we have to keep to everything. Good. Okay. We have to keep everything separate Thank as you. best That's we can. That's what I wanted to know. Yep. So, and the other thing is just about mowing. And I've been going back and forth, and Doom's on the line, and he knows. We've had many, many emails back and forth, back and forth about stuff being cut down, it shouldn't be cut down, and I send letters to the town every year, um, and still things get cut down. So um, I put up a fence on part of my property, just giving you all a heads up. Okay. You had signs at one point, too. Yep, I put no up mowing. signs. I, yes, they disappeared. So he came, Pooter came. He put the blade down, he got to the side and lifted up the blade, he put it down on the other side, and then he mowed it, and then he did the same thing on the other no more sign. I also have tape on the trees to mark the boundaries. Um, so to this date, that all has not worked. We have not done all roads at the Maybe we this year will be a charm. It'll be August. Before, so yeah, August and I, you know. I don't, I don't know. I, busy right now. I take care of the ditch. I take care of all the down wood. I take care of all that stuff myself. So as long as I'm able. I can't remember what you said. And so noted to anyone else that has um, a part of their roadside where they do not want to get roadside mowing to uh, contact Julie at the town office fairly soon. Well, put me down, Julie. <laughs> Do I still need to send a letter and put up the signs and all that stuff? I think they just need to know where. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for patience.
Okay, let's move on to, um, well, I'm going to go back up to number four. Approve to abate delinquent tax amounts, which is $5 or less. Um, the total amount of that $5 or less comes to $34.76. Um, I move that, um, it says 1972. Oh, I'm sorry. It, last that year we last approved year. 34. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's going down. It's $19.72. Yeah. So I so move that with a total of 2165. One circle, but the total is 2165. Which number do you want? This one was circled, but this is the total. Yep, $21.65. Okay, $21.65. Um, I move that we abate these small balances. I second that. All in favor? All right. $21.65. Thank you, Doom. Yep. Um, number five, sign the audit engagement letter for fiscal year 23. Um, we again are contracting with Pace and Holly, certified public accountants, to go through the audit of our books. They have done a very good job for us in the past, and each year it gets easier and easier for everyone. So I move that we accept. I need to reveal what the cost is, don't I? the certified public accountants Pace and Holly to do our audit. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're moving on to number seven, which is um, Bruce Marshall and Janine Weir. Um, the, the subject that I have listed here is slavery in Vermont. Um, so, um, well, you, do, you do have something to say. Yes, we do. We're ready to uh, hear. Well, what do we have to say? We've titled something, Slavery in Vermont. So what does that mean? Well, we have slavery in Vermont. Even though we voted against it and the Constitution spoke against it. And prohibits it. And prohibits it. People want to prohibit it. We also have laws. We have statutes. We have green books with all the statutes here. And um, we have a situation where we, where we came to the town for help. We asked the town to uh, enforce its bylaws. The town said, we're not going to enforce the bylaws. In fact, the town said made up stories about things, about facts that we brought forward. Let's, let's just so um, we're just asking Dune to do his job. We're asking, we're asking other people to do their job. We're asking the town generally to do their job. We have come to the town numerous times. We came to the town, and we're not given honest responses. And it's. You know, what we have been through is egregious, and it's unacceptable, and it's brutal. What we've received from the town, the legal system, from a corporation in Vermont and their legal counsel, Speak all up. engaging in extremely unethical, brutal behavior toward us. This is not acceptable. This country was founded by the inspiration of the Iroquois League of Nations, and their inspiration and the rights conferred um, from the Great League of Peace comes, comes through that Constitution today. This is not a dead thing just in the past. This is today. We have these rights inspired by the Great League of Peace, the Iroquois League of Nations, and also from the Magna Carta, whose rights comes through the, the U.S. Constitution that we have here today for us. It's, not, it's something protected that cannot be denied. And it's the same thing with the Vermont Constitution, which is um, the main charter in Vermont, the pivotal um, bedrock law of this state. So you have the U.S. Constitution and the Vermont Constitution, which are bedrock law here. They are law that cannot be violated. Um, 
and yet how um, we've seen the town of Rochester operate um, a court of law. Um, it's people, disgusting. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Harrowing. That's what's Bruce, happened. Bruce, 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 just stay calm. Look, it's just a matter of we have certain rights that cannot be molested that come from the Vermont Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, founding documents. And so all we are saying and all we choose to say is there needs to be a change here. That the town of Rochester and their officials, their employees, and the boards of Rochester need to start doing their job. And there needs to be support from all parties responsible, particularly Dan McKinley and Sandra Haas, um, and all parties involved and responsible to support Dune um, to do his job, which is what we've said numerous times in different ways, which is for Dune to give a notice of violation to Lyman Hall Incorporated that their plat map filed in land records in 2003, there's also a quote unquote corrective one that they claim is a corrective plat map they filed in 2019, that they need to remove these from the land records, that they violate local bylaws and law state of Vermont, inclusive of fire code. Um, and fire endangerments are never grandfathered. Nothing with Lyman Hall Incorporated's situation was grandfathered in 2003. We have said these things ad nauseum. So all we can say at this point is you need to do your job. All parties need to support Dune to do his job because a lot is on Dune. Um, he wears a lot of hats here that can create big trouble. But this is how it is right now, and he has a job to do, a job. It's not within the realm of Dune's duties and responsibilities um, to rubber stamp the breaking of the law when lives are in danger, when people are being brutalized, um, when people have expressed huge suffering and major fallout from an instrument, a financial instrument in land records. Um, that sucks people in with a pretense of legality that they rely upon and then get really hurt. It's not okay when people come and say, I suffered from this for years. And we, you know, how, how, how much more can we say to you? These are financial instruments in the land records that do needs to be supported to give Lyman Hall Incorporated a notice of violation regarding that it's up to Lyman Hall to remove these plot maps from the land markets, they need to be held in trust of Julie Smith okay. because they involve things. And secondly, Julie Smith needs to be supported that um, she needs to follow the law and not record Lyman Hall Incorporated's judgment against us, um, which is an illegal void quorum non judis judgment um, that has been submitted to her for recording and she needs the support to follow the law and to stay within the bounds of her and responsibilities of her position as town clerk. And that's what needs to happen here. There needs to be ethics and um, honesty. And we have not gotten that um, in this situation. And it needs, to, it needs to come here because otherwise there's just a continuance of a, a, a pattern of a grave brutality toward us. And it's just not okay. And we're just saying, okay. let's come to some resolution here. I have read, I have printed out double-sided and read all the documents that you sent to us this morning. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that I really see in here that I feel at this point in time we need to respond to is that we do recognize that you have issued a second notice of bogus form just in the legal judgment. Um, you asked in the paperwork that um, we, we verify that we recognize that you have done, you have filed that paper. Well, it's um, actually, that's not what the that letter no says. No, all we've said is you need to do your job, that our rights under the U.S. Constitution and the Vermont Constitution can be unmolested. So whatever you think of that, that's your business, that's up to you. All we are saying is that we've done this, we have these rights that come through the inspiration of the Iroquois League of Nations, that come through the Magna Carta's rights the Magna Carta through the Constitution, and, and, that, and that you need to do your job. That's at all it is. At this point in time, we have the right to secure counsel, which Good. we have done. So I have a feeling this will bounce back and forth 
um, until a resolution is found. Well, there is a resolution. The wait, resolution wait, 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 is wait. in the land records. Right. Okay, the there's a valid judgment in the land records. Okay, the, 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 the power, the authority in this nation comes from the people. <laughs> the judge is a substitute authority. She is not the true authority. Peppers, I would not we are not to going to be enslaved by any of these people who are taking away the authority from the people. And that's our authority to have a court. Okay. We are going that's to all we're going to do. Yeah, we don't really need our Bruce, Yeah, we know it. Bruce said some really important things, but ultimately... Um, Dune should quit. Look, we no, told no, 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 we don't told, go there. All right, we're not going to go, go into in the game. Dune just needs I, I to do his job. We're not saying Dune should quit. He should we're do his job or, 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 job or get someone who can do their job. No, no, no. Just for this point, it needs to do his job. And I'll just further say, since we did title, you know, what we wanted to say today, slavery in Vermont, that, you know, slavery does exist in Vermont. Absolutely. And We've experienced that. We've experienced it. You're part the past of it. Was, let me just speak. The past four years, three and a half years of litigation from being sued by Lyman Hall Incorporated, that's slavery. When no one will help you when there's grave, brutal dishonesty and unethical behavior in courts, in, in officers in the town, um, in a corporation, in their legal counsel, um, having to constantly deal with a case which, you know, we went to a contract lawyer, he referred us to a real estate lawyer. The real estate lawyer said, um, this is extremely fraudulent, but I can't help you, you need a whole firm. So we call a few firms, they're, they're quoting us between eighty to $90,000 to take us through litigation because it's so complex in fact in law of the case. And so having to do this, um, for a lot of pro se parties, it's a huge amount of work. When it's such a complex case in fact in law, it's a brutal, unbelievable amount of work. And a lot of people go through eviscerating um, nightmares from, from, from pro se litigation. And it's not okay, it's, all I can say is it's not okay to be so um, unethically brutal toward people when they come to you and say, um, please just follow your bylaws. Please follow this law of the state of Vermont. Like there is fire safety code. Just please do your job. And that's all we're saying. Please do your job. Please support Julie to do her job. And please support Dune to do his job. That is all we're saying because slavery is very much a reality in this state. And the only way it will stop is to have the rights per the founding documents be unmolested. And to, for people to find a deeper sense of ethics that's beyond the sadly what's become of too much of this country is too much of a materialistic, you know, egoic power paradigm of prestige in place versus coming from ethics in the heart. Um, and that's all that has meaning to us. And we're just asking yeah, for people to self-reflect about being actually honest in the situation and to actually do their job. In fact, we brought, uh, we didn't bring, Robert Finkel came here on his own accord. Um, we had brought him in to look at our property. I read that and, Yeah, and it's, 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 and we also have a, from uh, a Tony Desaurier. Looking attorney at attorney Dislorier. So you know it's 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 really interesting when certain people just look at that and oh they don't have to see anything they don't have to see anything you see and that's I don't want to go into the no, intricacies of law here but we I think we've made our point yeah, obviously we've, we've been point. through a, um, a horrible situation for three years it has been destructive to our lives our health and and a number of things. And, um, you know. Uh, but we just want healing at this point, and we want people to reflect honestly, because there's huge repercussions when people decide they're just going to look away. And, you know, this is supposed to be a country of the people and by the people, and that's what stands. And in the end, frankly, only kindness matters. And you can think that's very silly and just my philosophy, but. That's what's real. And everything else, you can get what you want and think you're getting this and that and connections with these people. And so, if, oh, who cares about Bruce and Janine? They'll just get, leave Rochester. But hey, you get live your with yourself. Stolen, get your you live with stolen, yourself. Everything it's, else. In the your end, time only stolen. kindness matters. Yeah. And yeah. that's all we have yeah, to say. So, okay. thank you very much. And, you know, uh, when we confer with counsel and they define Julie and Dune's job, 
that will take place. Thank you. Thank you both. Next item on our agenda is acceptance and approval of Rochester High School committee to proceed with uh, Du Bois and King's floodgate design. That would be Catherine. I'm sorry. <laughs> acceptance and approval of the acceptance high school repurposing committee's <laughs> floodgate design. Um, okay. Information to share. I'm just going to come up here because I'm yes. having trouble hearing back there and I want to make sure you can hear me. Um, so a month ago today, you participated in a meeting with Jamie and Sarah Wright, Two Rivers, and, uh, and members of the repurposing committee. Uh, we talked about many things, uh, the stage that we're at with the, the uh, Brownfields environmental assessment and uh, the flood plain mitigation plan and uh, the removal of the tank. So that's what I'm going to give you an update today on. So we were able to communicate with Grace Vinson, the state environmental officer, who basically said, oh, I'm waiting for the floodplain mitigation design, because then I'll be able to respond whether that meets the federal HUD guidelines. We really want to be eligible for HUD funding, because we're looking for a few million dollars. And Bernie Sanders has, again, supported our project, which has gone into the Appropriations Committee, I think we learned last year that we really need to manage our expectations, especially considering the condition of Congress right now. But it's a great vote of confidence that he has put another million dollars into that funding and he's pushed us through again. Um, so that's HUD funding. We're under the account of the USDA Community Facilities account. That's HUD funding. So Eric Law has reviewed our project. He's from USDA. All the boxes are checked positively. So you know that we mitigated the floodway by a boundary adjustment. That's been resolved. Um, and so the floodplain, uh, the, the fact the high school auditorium is located in the floodplain as of taking in water during uh, Irene. So we need an engineer. We have an engineer through DNK. And DNK has been doing all the work with surveys and so forth. But the one that has really got experience with floodplain mitigation design, and that happens to be in uh, 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 an employee of DNK. So what we have here is their invoice and scope of work for creating the mitigation design for the floodplain. And there was a sufficient funds left in our initial planning grant that we got in 2021 to cover the cost of this design. This is design is very important because it's going to allow us to go forward with everything else that we're doing. So I brought that for you to sign, Patty. Um, the, the cost of this is set at $3,500. $3, yeah, $3, um, yep. Can you verify that that balance is still available in that grant? Yes. Sarah Wright verified that too. Yeah. She, she already did that. And that it's not earmarked for any other expense? No. Okay. No. As a matter of fact, once we get the design, then we have what we need to go to get that extra $10,000 because we'll know what the cost of this is going to be, which is still an unknown to us. Mm -hmm. Not the cost of the design, but the cost of the actual implementation of the design. So um, that's what we're going to need to get that additional $10,000 uh, that that we're eligible for. So the other thing is that, per, um, all right, so any questions about that? Can I ask who's speaking? Oh, who is I'm, speaking? Sorry, I'm sorry, Robert. It's Catherine Shankman. And I, I have to, oh, God. I have to apologize Catherine. to my, my uh, tone Catherine, you earlier. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. I take all that that you want to give. Okay. So, so the next thing is, um, any questions about the floodplain mitigation? All right, so the next phase in the environmental assessment process is the testing and sampling 
of the site, the property. And that work plan is being developed right now. I got a grant, uh, or we got a grant, uh, for $32,000 from the Department of uh, Environmental Conservation to cover all of that. And we had assumed, even as recently, I think, as May 26th, that that, that uh, proposal from VHS, is it, or VH, what? Yes, VHB. Um, those are names. Uh, and uh, that proposal did not include the cost of removing the tank. All along, Sarah, Sarah Wright from Two Rivers has said, well, if their funding comes in, they can cover that. But I think at that meeting, she had just learned that the state was not allowing them at this point to use that fund for tank removal. So she's been working for the last three weeks to push that. She seems very confident, so I'm not gonna get anxious, but you know, until I got all the T's crossed and the I's dotted, when it comes to big bucks, you do sort of, it worries the back of your mind. And uh, she, she emailed today that um, they're going ahead with the proposal for the, the cost of the tank removal. Lyle Smith, who works for the school district, is working to install the interim uh, above ground uh, tank, and he's working with uh, BHB together with all this, so it's all gonna be coordinated. And they think that it's all going to be done by the end of August, so we'll see. Um, I think Sandy emailed me um, wanting to know about uh, when the umbrella investigation was going to be. If that's an inspector that's coming on site, I don't know the date of that because we're still in process, but as soon as I know anything, I'll convey it, okay? Yep. So I, I, I don't know, Patty, whether you printed this out, but I just wanted this uh, VHB thing also mm -hmm. part of your records. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and thank you for all that work. <laughs> Still more to come, but we're getting somewhere. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. And, you know, I just want to say that I don't know whether, if I had known now when I, when I started this project, whether I would have ever jumped into it, you know? <laughs> but I have to say that I have grown a deep appreciation for all the volunteer work that does happen in this town whether it's with our government or our agencies and organizations, it is what keeps the blood flow of these towns. Our fire department, I mean, it's also meaningful and it really is what binds us together as people in a community. So I wanna just officially say thank you. It's nice to hear. It's lovely, Catherine, thank you. Thank you. Can I make a comment? Yes, you can, Robert. Catherine Shankman. I want to say thank you. I also, I'm sorry about my voice, but I also want to thank Dean Mandel for community support and the, the opportunity for children to grow up in this town and be responsible. I'm sorry, my voice is not good, but I, I you know, you know, I, I don't know how we're all going to going to reflect on uh, Janine's commentary regarding Lyman Hall and the town of Rochester and so forth. It's something we all have to ponder and think about, but it's, 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 you know, I know you people think Robert is not from Rochester, and I'm not. I'm from Bethel, Vermont, and I, 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 I do everything I can every day to support the towns, and, and, and going forth. I think everyone, everyone, whether it's Zoom, Dune, I don't know where Dune is. He's got an assistant up there. <laughs> hey, dude. Uh, but I think I think it's uh, it, it could be proper to request recusals 
from recusals. In other words, officials should say, you know what, I, I'm resigning, I'm done with this stuff. And, Thank you. And so, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll end my commentary uh, with this thing, is to God bless everyone involved tonight, uh, whether it's, oh, by the way, I wanted to mention that Cooter and the road crew of Rochester are stellar. They're wonderful guys, and they've done a great. They've done a great job. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to number ten on our list: approve and sign Kristen's pay for grant administration as she's getting up and running. Um, we are going to reimburse her for time that she has spent um, on grant writing, which is takes a lot more expertise. And so what I have here is um, grant administration retro pay of 100 hours at 643 additional per hour, $643. Um, I move that we approve this. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. A lot of thank yous tonight. Um, okay, now we are moving on to a driveway permit for Nick Darbeloff, um, Rogers Peak Forest LLC. They, they just need to mark it. They haven't marked it yet, so we're not, we won't approve that at this point, but I'll call in this next week. John's going to look at it. Ray's supposed to put some flagging up there. It's coming off the Bethel Mountain Road somewhere. Okay. I'm not sure exactly where it is, and John wants to just make and sure. And it's in writing, so I think they've made the decision. You're right. Very good. So they're, they're I don't know whether they're purchasing property or, or leasing or what, whatever they're doing, they're coming in from. I you know, believe they're purchasing a piece of property so they can access the, the rest of their property. That's There's a purchase and sale agreement in, in, in the works. works. That's okay. a wonderful solution. He didn't want to purchase until he knew that he could put a driveway in. Yeah, and I think we'll we'll just get to it uh, as soon as John, as soon as uh, Ray puts some uh, flag and tape up there, so we'll know exactly where it's going. So we will forward this. Yeah, and I'll give him a call this week. Okay, I think we're ready to hear from our departments. Um, we have no one here from the library. How about the highway department? Uh, John's busy doing ditching on North Hollow Road and uh, Cooper Run and stone lining uh, uh, the ditches. So that's what he's been up to. Great. Okay. Summer and the bridge is coming along. Uh, they got one wing wall poured. Um, they're going to be looking at backfilling that this week. And then after the 4th, they'll be starting on the other side. Okay. And he's ahead of schedule, so. <laughs> you never know when snow is going to come, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> he's, uh, he's going at it, which is good. We do have our utilities operator here tonight. Hi, Terry. Yeah, we just got the report from d I got to read it and get back to them. Yeah, they need to get it filed by Friday. By Friday. Okay, so you'll be reviewing that. We just got the fire truck back. That's been in the doctor's for a freaking month. I think I noticed that, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I was surprised you didn't leave me a note. Me. <laughs> I saw I'm glad it, it wasn't mine. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make a comment? Yes, you may, Robert. I want to put a message out to. Sorry, uh, to Nancy Woolley and her dear husband, Charles. He's a wonderful man. And I hope that all the improvements onto the park will maybe, maybe give light to Nancy. She's a wonderful woman. We agree. Thank you, Robert. 
do we have Jeff Gephardt? No, we do not. And do we have any grant updates? Um, just a quick one that we did receive our reimbursement um, for the high school study of $9,226.74. That was our requisition free. Good. If they say we deserve the money, they should give it to us. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, I think we rearranged the schedule a little bit, but I think we have made it through all of our business for the evening. Yeah. Is there anything else? Hey, Patty. Oh, yes, sir, Robert. <laughs> don't, don't ever call me, sir, but I do want to thank you for your diligence and your your responsibility and uh, i know dune is is uh witnessing this meeting and i hope that the town people whether it's rochester or bethel they respect the people's words thank you so much okay if that is it for everyone i move to adjourn second all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.